In this video, we're going to cover how to set up the cash discounting app. We have a separate app on how to use cash discounting for businesses. This is really more if you're setting up the cash discounting app. Okay, first of all, make sure the app is downloaded to a device and the app needs to be started at least one time from a Clover device. Okay, just like that, just click on it. The reason is that's when we get permission to access the account and everything. Okay, from this point forward, like, you know, again, we just tapped on the, on the app one time. Okay, from this point forward, you can do the setup from the Clover, um, from our web portal, or you can do the setup on the app. I'm gonna show you how to access that Clover uh, web dash, the, it's not a dashboard, but our, our Clover web, uh, setup portal. You can type email setup URL, put in your email address, okay? And, um, and then what we're gonna do, is you tap save, what we'll do is we will send you a link that you can use to log in to this particular merchant's account, and you need their owner password, okay? But after you log into a particular account, you can use that same link for other uh, installs. You just gotta change the merchant ID, okay? So we'll show you that later on, okay? But either way, let's, uh, let's assume for right now that you're doing the setup on the actual app itself, okay? So you would tap to get started, and um, you can see the setup that way, or you can tap on setup, cash discounting. Okay, either way. Now what you can do here is first thing you'll see is you can revert prices, which I'm going to go ahead and do right here so we have a good starting point. Okay, so I'm going to revert all the prices and um, and, that, and basically uh, from the app you need to be logged in as an admin or an owner in order to do that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started. So here's a brand new location, let's say. First thing you want to do is raise the prices. You can raise the prices to dual decimals. So like in this case, let's just pick 3.99%, okay? And uh, we're gonna hit save. And you'll see that we are modifying every inventory item of the business. And we do recommend you do this after the majority of their inventory items have been added to the business, okay? The reason is because if you do an import of your data, that's something that uh, we won't, you know, we won't import, we won't, we, from then on, after you raise the prices, we're gonna manage the inventory on behalf of the business, which means if they add an item in the future, we'll automatically raise the price of that item, okay, by the 3.99% in this case, okay. There's, there's two exceptions to this rule. One is if you use the quick edit on the, on the, on the, of the inventory on the Clover web dashboard, uh, we won't automatically update the price. We will not, okay? Also, we will not automatically update the price if you import inventory using like a spreadsheet, okay? So those are the two exceptions, and that's why we recommend that you add all the inventory before you raise the prices, okay? Now, there is a way around this, and we have an audit function that'll raise prices of every item that have not been raised. I'll show you that in a minute, okay? But in general, you wanna raise all the prices after you've added all the inventory items to the business, you know, so that way in the future when they when they make changes, we will raise the prices when they add new items with the exception of the quick edit or using an, an, an import, okay? So that's real important to know. The discount model, you wanna make sure, just use cash discounting, okay? You don't need to use dual prices unless you have a special case and you wanna discuss that with us. Email us, help at appheaven.us if you wanna use this, okay? But use cash discounts is the uh, model you wanna use. And then you also want to make sure that, um, like for example, you can set the discount label. This is what appears when a discount happens, uh, when we offer a cash discount. This is the name of the discount that will be applied on the order. Usually most people just call it a discount, not even cash discount, okay? You can add a minimum discount and a maximum discount just in case you need that. For gift cards, just so you know, there's a special handling we do. We need to know the name of the gift card. You know, it's really a search term, okay? And whatever that search term is, if uh, if this business is selling gift cards, then we'll know not to automatically raise the price of gift card items uh, when those are purchased. Instead, we will add an activation fee, which you can call it anything you want. We'll add an activation fee for the 3.99% in this case, okay? And that's if you check this box, okay? And that's really important. Uh, because gift cards, if you if we raise the price automatically on gift cards, then the, the balance on the gift card is going to be the wrong amount by 3.99%. So we do an activation fee instead, and then when they pay with cash, you know, that covers the activation fee, so they're still paying the, the cash price, okay? 
Uh, sometimes if you have uh, lottery items that are variable priced that you're adding, make sure the word lottery is in the variable priced item and we'll ignore it if you check this box, okay? Credit label, that's really what you call your credit prices, which really should be called list price or regular price, okay? That's the name of it. And then if you're on a uh, duo, this would be the, what is the name of the, this is not a duo device, but if it was, you could change what's the name of the credit button that the customer sees and you can call it list button or regular price button or whatever there, okay? Flash cash price is important because every time an item is purchased on the register, we're going to flash the original price, the cash price of that item. This is just familiarity for some, uh, some businesses. They really want to remember and retain the original price. And so you can check that and they'll, they'll, you'll be able to retain that, okay? Um, a split EBT payments, this is an option. It's really handy. What it'll do if you have this checked off is um, you can set up your EBT categories. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And if you've done so, then when you go to, and I'll show, I'll demonstrate this in a minute, but when you, when you have a ticket, like an order that has EBT items and non-EBT items, what, uh, what we will do is we'll automatically split out the EBT items, we'll remove the tax on those items, and we'll add a cash discount to those items, all in one, all with one button press. And then, so then the clerk can cash out the non-EBT items, we pay them with credit or cash, and then after that we'll automatically prompt the merchant to pay for the EBT items, the ones that had the tax removed and the cash discount already applied. Okay, so that's a really handy feature. Enable auto pop-up, for the most part you want that on. Uh, this will just mean that the merchant will be asked if they're paying cash or credit every time automatically. If you don't use this option, then the merchant can still choose cash or credit, but there will be a button that they can use to, to, to decide about that. Okay, I'll show you these things in a minute. Alert when cash selected. You can have an extra prompt that pops up with an alert so that sometimes if you have inexperienced um, people at the register and they just need to know if they chose the cash price, what to do next, this will add an extra alert. You don't always want it because you know, it's just an extra click. If this is a restaurant and you want tip hints on the receipt, then this is the tip hints. You pick the tip hints that you want to show up, okay? And so in this case, we'll choose a 10, 20, 25, and a 30, okay? Receipt options, um, you know, if it's a restaurant that likes to ch take the order to some other place for payment, make sure you choose the print order barcode. A dual column receipt, you don't really need this, but if you choose it, what we'll do is we'll give you a a cash and a credit price for every single item that is uh, on the order. If you don't choose it, if you choose one of these, then we'll still print the cash price and the credit price, but we'll only show the total cash and the total credit price, okay? So this dual column is only needed if you wanna have a, 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 a accounting of every single price and the credit price and the cash price, okay? So now let me show you, go ahead, let me go and show you how to use this. To finish off the settings, if you chose that EBT option, you can now choose the EBT categories, and it's really simple. You just choose which categories contain EBT items, and you can remove them if you need to, okay? But you just choose which items contain EBT categories, and you choose done, okay? In our case, um, you know, we're just gonna pick one category. We're gonna make it this one right there, and just choose done. That's it, that's how you set up your EBT. You can also have the a merchant can use the inventory right here and they can see the cash and the credit price for all of their items if they need to see those things. Eventually we'll add more features, but that is a view that's available. Okay, now let's go on to usage. Go to the register. Let's say you can, by the way, we do work with the register, the sale app, manual transaction app, and the dining app. So they're all covered. But let's say you purchase an item and uh, see we flash the cash price because we chose that option. You can tap the pay button and we see we auto pop up this box. This is the one that you could uncheck if you didn't want it to auto pop up. If you choose the cash option, we are going, this is the actual extra message that was requested in the setup. So we're seeing that. And see we add a discount to the item right there. This is, so now is back to the original cash price, okay? You can use this cash credit button right here to remove a discount. See that, now we're back to the button and we remove the, the option. This time we want to pay credit, we can do that. Or we can go back and we can add the the cash price again, okay? So you get your options of how to do that. Now let's say you didn't want to do that. You actually wanted to print the, um, 
you wanted to print the receipt. Okay, so what you can do, there's two ways to print the receipt. Okay, one is, see there's a print options category here. This print options category, we recommend you move it to the very beginning of all the categories. You can do that using the inventory app. Let me go ahead and show you that real quick. So, um, see, so you find the print options category. Let's go to categories. Okay. And see right here, you can just grab it and you can move it wherever you want. And we moved it to first in the list, okay? You can also move this print options category from the web dashboard, okay? Both have the ability to do that, okay? But you can, if you wanted to, see, if you wanted to print the order before hitting the pay button, like for example, wait staff or dining, you can tap print options and tap print order. And there it is. This is the order. It's exactly reflecting exactly what it'll print out if you tap the print button right here, okay? As you can see, you've got the order. Uh, you chose If you chose that order um, bar at the bottom, and you also see all the dual prices because we chose it for all the items. If we had not, you would have just seen, and you can still select this. For example, this is, this is just the cash prices, and at the bottom, we give you the, the cash price and the credit price, okay? Or you could have chosen just the credit prices. Now you see the credit prices and at the bottom we give you the cash price and the credit price total only. Okay, So you've got your choice of what options you use right there. This is useful for, a, for example if dining staff want to print the order before the customer actually pays. Okay, Now again you could also hit the pay button and um, now in this case there's already a discount but we're going to remove it and you're going to see the automatic ability to choose. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. Now let me go and show you one other uh, feature here for the, um, let's say you have multiple items that you've chosen that are on your, okay, this is a different app. Let's go ahead and just choose multiple items, okay? You're paying, you could do a partial credit payment right here, and you can choose which items you're paying for, okay? Or you can choose a dollar amount, okay? If you choose a dollar amount, they're only going to get a, a discount for that amount on the ticket for the cash amount, okay? But if you chose certain items, you can do pay cash for selected items. We broke the ticket into two. So here's the first set of items that you can pay for. And then after that, you can pay the remaining order. See, there's one more item left. And you can choose cash or credit for that one also. Okay. So that's an example of the use case and how that works. Okay. Now in the dining app, it's very similar. You can tap on the dining app and you can have multiple orders. I mean, multiple tables, for example, you know, See, um, let's say a guest has uh, a pedicure and then they have, this is just something unrelated, okay? But, and then the whole table has, let's say, an appetizer, okay? Well, if you want to just print the order for the guest three, you can tap guest three, print options, print their order. There you go. This is just the guest three order, okay? Or you can tap the whole table, print order, and you can see the entire order for uh, for the the order for the entire table, okay? And the payment works the same, and everything should work exactly the way you need it. Again, we have that extra message, okay? Now, for the sale app, it's a little bit different, okay? With the sale app, um, actually, let me show you manual transaction, then we'll switch to the sale app, okay? But so for the, for the sale app, you can, I mean, for the manual transaction, you can put in an amount, okay? And when you hit charge, we're going to ask you if it's credit or cash. If it's credit, we're going to raise the price for you automatically. See that? So you pay it out. That's how the manual transaction is done. Okay. With the sale app, um, you know, this, uh, what will happen, and I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Okay. So here's the sale app. I'm going to tap on it. And what we do with the sale app is you can put in an amount like you would, let's say $10. Okay. See, there's a button right here. It says cash credit. Okay. If you choose it, we, we flip over to the credit price. Okay. That's a different app. It's unrelated. We flip over the, to the uh, credit price. If you tap it again, we go back to the cash price. So you can choose if you're paying with the cash price or the credit price before you tap the charge button. Okay, so that's how the sale app works. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the, how to do the setup using the uh, web instead of, um, again, you can do the setup right here. But let's say that you didn't want to. Then what you could have done is you could just make sure that the merchant has tapped the, the cash discounting app one time. Again, that's when we get permissions to access this account. And then you can go over to the, actually, let me go ahead and show you. You can tap on this view. I showed you this before. Email setup URL. Put in your email address. You'll get the URL that you can use for setting up on the web. And I'm going to go ahead and just show you that. Okay, let's go ahead and go to that, um, 
to that link, what you're going to see when you go there is you're going to see something like this right here, this portal. Okay. And, um, and you can log into it with the merchant um, pin code. But really, once you're right here, okay, now right here, you can change the, see this, this, mer this is the merchant ID, okay? You can change that to anything you want, any business you want. Once you know the merchant ID of the business, not the billing ID, the merchant ID, okay? If you don't know how to get that, you can contact us and we'll help you get that, okay? But you can just basically, um, you can just basically go to that particular location and see right here, you can raise the prices, you can revert the prices, you can audit. I was mentioning the audit. This is important, again, if you imported a bunch of items using a Excel spreadsheet, or if you use the quick edit feature, uh, those are both um, something that we're working on, but right now they, the prices may not raise on those. And you can do audit, and we're going to audit the prices, and we're going to uh, basically just um, just raise the price of anything that wasn't raised. Okay. Now again, as you can see, all the all the same features are here on the app, and you can tap save settings right there. Okay. So that's how you can use the web dash. I'm not the web dashboard, but you can use the web to make. Um, whatever changes you need. Now, if you make a change from the, uh, from the web a login, just remember that those changes will take effect basically as soon as the merchant makes one payment or it was as soon as they access the Clover app. You know, they just need to go to the app one time, you know, and just tap on it, right? So you just, you just go like that. Have the merchant do that and see sync complete. That means we synced with the settings that were set on the web, okay? They don't want to do that. They don't need to. They just need to make one complete payment and they'll be updated with the changes. Okay. So either way, that's how you do the setup. We're going to make another, um, another video and you can watch it also, but it's going to be a repeat for a lot of these things. It'll be more for the business to use or for you just to be able to train a business and how to use it. Be sure to reach out to us at help at appheaven.us if you have any questions, or if you have any needs, or even if you have any new feature requests. Help at appheaven.us, H-E-L-P at A-P-P-H-E-A-V-E-N dot U-S, okay? Feel, and just let us know your phone number. We'll be glad to give you a call back, and we'll, we'll, if you have any features you need that you don't see, uh, thank you. Have a good day.